Hello world! In today's tutorial we are going to add memory to the Langraph React agent using the Tavli tool to get a web connection and an OpenAI LLM that we built in the previous LangChain tutorial. We will use Langraph's memory saver class to implement checkpointers, which is a way to add in memory storage to a Langraph agent. I'll show you an example in both Python and Node.js. Before we start, I want to emphasize that the purpose of my tutorials is not that you code parallel to me. For this matter, I always upload the full code to my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Let's get to the point. If you haven't watched my previous LangChain tutorial, please do so because this one is an upgrade of that one. It's mandatory because today we will use the Langraph agent that we built in the previous LangChain tutorial. In the previous LangChain tutorial, we built a Langraph agent, but the agent didn't have memory. Langchain recently introduced a new way of adding memory to agents by using checkpointers. Checkpointers provide a persistence layer for Langraph. They allow you to interact with and manage the graph state. When you use a graph with a checkpointer, the checkpointer saves a checkpoint of the graph state at every super step, enabling several powerful capabilities like adding memory. More precisely, we'll use the Memory Saver class, which provides a practical implementation of checkpointers with a Langraph agent. But before we get into it, Let's run the code from the previous LangChain tutorial. I want to show you practically what it's like to chat with a Langraph agent without memory. As I explained in the previous tutorial, we built a Langraph agent of the React type. This means that for every question we ask the agent, the agent will decide if tools are needed to provide an answer or not. We provided only one tool, and that's the Tavli tool to get a web connection. So if we ask the agent such a question that the agent will assess that using the Tavli tool is necessary to provide an answer, the agent will use the Tavli tool. If we ask the agent such a question that the agent will assess that using the Tavli tool is not necessary to provide an answer, the agent will not use the Tavli tool, only the LLM. In our case, this is an OpenAI LLM. Let's run the Python example from the previous LangChain tutorial. First, let's greet the agent with our name. Now let's ask the agent what our name is. See, the agent is clueless. This is an example of a question where the agent doesn't need to use the Tavli tool to provide an answer. The agent simply greeted us back. Second, let's ask the agent what's the current weather in San Francisco. This is an example of a question where the agent does need to use the Tavli tool to provide an answer. Why? Because the OpenAI LLM doesn't know this answer. We're asking about real-time data, and this is where the Tavli tool comes into play. Now let's ask about New York. The important thing is that we don't mention the weather, just New York. See, the agent is clueless. We don't want to know information about New York. We want to know the weather in New York. Let's look at the code of today's tutorial. I'll comment only on the Python example. I want to emphasize that the Node.js example follows the same logic. It's just the Node.js equivalent code. As in the previous LangChain tutorial, we have two folders, one for the Python example and one for the Node.js example. In Python, we'll use a virtual environment to install the dependencies. In Node.js, we'll use package.json to install the dependencies. Now we'll install the dependencies in the Python example. Change the directory to this one. Create a virtual environment named myvenv with the following command. I will not press enter because I already did this. Now you should see a folder named myvenv here. Activate the virtual environment with the following command. As you can see, the virtual environment is activated. Now we can install the dependencies by running the following command. Again, I will not press enter because I already did this. This command looks into the requirements txt file and installs all dependencies with specified versions. Now we'll install the dependencies in the Node.js example. Here, we'll not use a virtual environment but the package JSON file. The process is simpler than in Python. Change the directory to this one. Now we can install the dependencies by running the following command. I will not press enter because I already did this. This command looks into the package JSON file and installs all dependencies with specified versions. Now you should see a folder named node modules here. As in the previous LangChain tutorial, in both cases, we need to create the env file and add two environment variables, the OpenAI API key and the Tavli API key. As you can see, I only have the Tavli API key here because I have the OpenAI API key set in Windows environment variables, so I don't need to add it to the env file. The code is identical to the one from the previous LangChain tutorial. The differences are the following. To start with, we need to import the memory saver class. 
Then we initialize it. Next, we pass it to the checkpointer parameter when creating the React agent. Later, we define a function to process checkpoints. This function is for you to see how checkpoints work. Let me be clear, you don't need it for the memory to work with the LangGraph agent. But it's nice, if not necessary, to know at least generally what's happening in the background. Here we display key information about every checkpoint and checkpoint messages, both from the user and from the agent. Moving on, we need to adjust the while loop we use for chatting with the agent. There's one crucial thing. We need to set the configuration with the thread ID. This can be any string. I simply choose one. What's important is that down here, when we list all checkpoints from the memory, we need to provide identical configuration. Last, we pass listed checkpoints to the function we defined above to extract information about checkpoints. Now, let's run the Python example. We will test both cases we did before with the LangGraph agent from the previous LangChain tutorial. First, let's greet the agent with our name. We'll stop here for a second. This is what the checkpoints look like. Every checkpoint has a timestamp and unique ID. Currently, we only have one message saved in the checkpoints. Now, let's ask the agent what our name is. Let's scroll up. Here you go. The agent knows our name from memory. As you can see, we now have more checkpoints. Also, messages both from the user and the agent are adding to the checkpoints. Second, let's ask the agent what's the current weather in San Francisco. Again, let's scroll up. As you can see, the agent is calling the Tavily tool with this query. Also, more messages have been added to the checkpoints. Let's scroll down to see if the agent already has an answer to what's the current weather in San Francisco. It's noticeable that now we have so many checkpoints that the chat is starting to look messy. But as I said, you can comment lines 148 and 150 in the Python example and the chat will look nice, but you'll have no information about the checkpoints. Now let's ask about New York. Again, let's scroll up. As you can see, the agent is calling the Tavli tool with this query. Also, even more messages have been added to the checkpoints. Let's scroll down to see if the agent already has an answer to what's the current weather in New York. Here you go. The agent knows what we want to know about New York from memory. Although we didn't explicitly say we wanted to know the weather, the agent got the context from memory. As you can see, no matter if the agent uses tools or not, it's able to get context from memory. Consequently, the user experience chatting with an agent with memory is much better than with an agent without memory. Let's quit this chat. Ta-da, pretty amazing, huh? That's it. Thanks for watching. If this tutorial was helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe.